Okay, we're over here on the west side of the garage. You can see that we've got our grounding rod is buried. Okay. Power coming up is coming up from the ground. We got a sleeve on our electric power supply conduit. That's a good thing. Okay. Our boxes are both sealed to help prevent water going into the wall. That's a good thing. This is the main electric service disconnect. This is the main okay on the side of the house is a, a nice model it's um the l1 and l2 are protected as they come in the neutral is clearly labeled this is a good operation right here this is a, this is a good setup on the disconnect i'm impressed so we run along inside the garage west wall this is our load center L1 and L2 at this time do not have to be protected. Do not have to have the little rubber booties on them. Uh, maybe in the future, gas bonding, right garage. This is our UFER. Maybe this is a gas bonding. We'll take that. Uh, we'll take this apart. We'll take the inquiring minds want to know. Let's go in here. I've pushed and tested all these. Every one of them. Now, this is kind of interesting because the garage overhead door doesn't work. And I've been doing GFCIs, and I got a video about that. So we move along here and we look at our labeling, and we see that our clothes dryer is on a GFCI. That's a good thing. We also see that our air conditioning condensing unit has been turned off. Okay, somebody turned that off. I've been I've been pushing these buttons, but I did not turn that off. Somebody turned it off. It was turned off for a reason. I did not turn it on. Do no harm. It was turned off for a reason. The condensing unit. We could not operate the condensing unit today for any extended period of time because it's only 50 degrees outside. Okay, so we couldn't collect any meaningful data. But I would like to at least bump it, but I'm not even going to turn it on because that's off. Bonding location, labeled right there. Label, label, label. So what do we got? We got anything wrong going on here? We've got a couple things going wrong. Um, you know, I don't. I hate to discount my work. Okay, I really do. But you're not supposed to have more than an eighth of an inch gap right there. Okay. Not more than an eighth of an inch gap. We're not supposed to have debris in the bottom of the panel. And we're not supposed to have paint inside of the panel. The paint, you know, is not on the bus bars. So it's probably not going to affect operation. Probably not going to affect operation. That being said, you know, it's, it's against code. And it's against the manufacturer's installation instructions. And um, it could void your warranty. Uh, I don't know if this is good news or bad news, but speaking of warranty, this cabinet has been recalled by the manufacturer for sparks and stuff. Apparently, in the factory, a lot of these connections were not torqued properly. And the manufacturers deemed these cabinets, these load centers, fire hazards. This has been recalled. Now, there is a method that the manufacturer approves of bringing this cabinet up to factory specs and I can tell that hasn't happened. The, it's supposed to be done by a trained, somebody trained to bring these cabinets up to spec, special class, special certification, master electrician, and then he does things inside of this cabinet so that if I'm inspecting it, I would know that this cabinet no longer, I mean, it currently meets manufacturer specifications. But it doesn't. It doesn't. This cabinet has been recalled. Q0C42UF squared E has been recalled. 